Yo guys, this is Jared, aka The Saner Sins on PSN, returning to the foe with some MLB 13 to show, ranked online exhibition gameplay featuring the Boston Red Sox taking on the Houston Astros. The pitching matchup featured on the day at Minute Maid Park will be Clay Buckholtz taking on Eric Bedard. The challenge to get a win with the Astros lineup continues, and this matchup will be no different from the last. The only lineup changes either side would make are the substitution of Steven Drew for Pedro Siriaco at the shortstop position, and my exchanging Fernando Martinez for JD Martinez. One of the biggest obstacles my opponent and I will have to hurdle will be really ugly lag spikes that spring up sporadically. As you can see from the top right hand corner of your screen, that yellow bar would be the indicator of our connections throughout this matchup. It's probably equivalent to a 3 bar connection in Call of Duty. But there will be moments when it'll light up red. I only wish I had an audio cue when it did that. Something as subtle as Dick Tuffield screaming out, DANGER WILL ROBINSON DANGER! Oh right. I'M FUCKING OLD! Anyway, this matchup is already looking to be a tense battle as my opponent is demonstrating to have a very patient approach and a brilliant eye for the strike zone. And this long ball off the bat of David Ortiz probably would have been much worse if our connections were better because that was a hanging curveball he just got out in front of some. But the brakes keep cutting my way as I double him off at first on poor base running management. Now it's time to work his pitch count, visualize the strike zone a little better, and break him down to becoming my batting tee. And one thing I'm learning quickly in this game was that both sides were getting pinched on the black. This was going to be a tight zone the whole game, and the only victory either side can claim in stretching it out will be to reclaim the black. The one thing either player needs to expand the zone? Do what I just did! Be too aggressive on a 3-1 pitch and beat into the ground, ball four. Erase the runner before he ever reaches base, and give your opponent the green light to pitch down and away to see just how much further he can go before you stop fishing. So instead of having two runners on via the walk, I have one on with two outs for Chris Carter. This could be an inning to open up some of the offense given he's struggling to get some calls in his favor. And with that wild pitch in the dirt skipping away from Salta Lamakia, this would have been a great opportunity to have runners on second and third which likely could have forced my opponent to walk Carter to go after the much weaker threat of Brett Wallace. Instead, Carter will be looking at a 3-2 pitch that he'll just get under as he lazily skies out to right to end the inning. Wasted opportunity there. Time to go back to work on the mound and this lineup is just unrelenting. Facing off against the 2012 breakout rookie sensation third baseman Will Middlebrooks, I pick up on a clue. It's not a strong enough indicator of YK007 Lee's tendencies, but it's certainly something I'll be playing around with throughout this match. See if he can't tip his hand a bit and show me what cards he's playing with. I can't gamble to go all in on a potential bluff, not when I know this one and done matchup means I have to go hard or go home. And sorry, but I've grown to love the scenery here. I love it so much that I'm going to suggest you all follow the Houston Nationals on Twitter and go check out the ballpark if you're in the Houston area. Not like you've got jack shit all else to do. Wait. Wait. Rewind, play that back, pause, for the bitches, and see if that made any sense. No? Okay then, it wasn't just me. So, once again, I'm being far too aggressive on hitters counts and luckily my pitching has kept me in this ball game. I'm getting great opportunities to rock this guy like his name were Amadeus and instead I'm getting him out of his own self-created jams. It's like I'm playing to lose here. And it doesn't help that I've already cracked my opponent's pitching tendencies. He likes to stay down 80% of the time. If he were getting the black calls, he'd stay out on the edges of the strike zone the whole game through. Because he's getting pinched, he's forced into deeper counts and it's clear he's uncomfortable there. If I keep him in those deep counts, this game becomes mine. Moving to the top of the fourth, and I just get away with a dead fish of a fastball left out over the heart of the plate that Pedroia just jerks foul. Oh, thank Christ. As odd as this may sound, I think my opponent did me a favor on that pitch. I got the peek at his hand, and now I know that my earlier suspicions are right. His timing is off on anything hard. The pitch that's speeding up his bet has been my changeup, and it's the best he's most comfortable swinging at regardless of locations. Now the first few innings have been very dry with only a few teased rally attempts, but in the end, the scoreboard shows an evenly matched pitcher's duel that isn't actually there. I'm getting hit hard, but he's not catching any breaks and finding the gaps and alleys that would hurt me. I'm being too aggressive and bailing him out of situations I should be capitalizing upon. This game should be wide open for either of us and so far, 
it isn't. Middlebrook's throw to first and it pulls Napoli off the bag! A huge error allows the best Astros player on first with no outs in the bottom of the fourth and this could start up a huge rally for the Strohs. Pena gets the 2-1 pitch after the swing and strike and he gets all of that back! Back! You can kiss that one goodbye! A monstrous slam off Carlos Pena's stick puts Houston up two, shattering the shutout pitching duel we had going on. And just like that, my patient approach pays off pulling me out in front to take the lead. It's what I've been waiting for all day, just a chance to crack this game silence by putting up some numbers on the board. Little did I anticipate that one stroke could scratch across a crooked number in my favor. Last time out with these Houston boys, I was barely able to get one run. A solo shot off the bat of Chris Carter. But this game, it's still early, I'm not as jittery behind the controls, and I'm launching into the seats once more! A big swing of the bat off of the AL MVP and overlord Justin Maxwell, and this lead is now doubled. I think it's safe to say I've cracked my opponent. I've snapped his will as he starts diving all over the place, clearly frustrated that I'm just lighting him up for a hit after hit after hit. But luckily for him, my office tends to be the weakness of my game. And after that hit past Matt Dominguez, I think pitching this inning will be my new Achilles heel. I'm getting too cute with my pitches, spotting more over the plate to try and induce more outs, but instead giving up a collection of hits to string together a nice little rally. And I'm still bailing YK out of jams as I manage to mess up this routine double play that would have left the runner on third with two outs. What a terrible decision on my part to load up the throw to second, never cancel it out, thus pulling Altuve off the bag before he has to fire off to get Middlebrooks at first. I've given my opponent a great opportunity here to drive across two runs on any hit put into play. And because of that bumble, I'm now pitching around Salsalamakia. Falling behind in the count, I just opt to put him on in favor of trying to induce a ground ball off the bat of Pedro Siriaco. I get the slow roller I want, but it's just out of the reach of Tyler Green and that'll bring across two, cutting my lead in half. Well, now it's time to go into damage control. There's still two runs to play with and only one more out to obtain after this lazy pop out to third on the left field grass. It would figure that after getting two big bombs to the seats, the very next half inning, I'd fold up and choke away some run support. That always seems to be my MO. The only thing that helped to stop the bleeding is the fact that he's late on my fastballs. Bottom half of the fifth and Matt Dominguez looks to go opposite field with this rip, but it just falls. Foul! Damn it! That might have been a huge rally starter to retaliate for the top half. <sighs> Alright. Okay. Just took that 0-2 pitch back up the middle, but I'm going to be salty about that failed leadoff double. If the momentum isn't shifting, then my temper sure as all fuck is. A failed attempt to move the runner over on Tyler Green's at bat, and now I'm slowly starting to see red. Altuve hits a hard liner, but of course it's right at the shortstop. And now I'm down 0-2 with Pena. Oh, but I get a good rip to center. Ugh. Okay, I'm getting pretty upset here. Things are really starting to slip away from me now, and it's all because I'm playing with a chip on my shoulder. I'm not losing the momentum, I'm handing it over. I shouldn't be fuming over that two-run fifth, but I am. I shouldn't be upset that I didn't score in the last inning, but I am. And then these lag spikes are just... I sped up his bat. I did that. I messed up on the release courtesy of that aforementioned spike, and because it was hanging, he framed that shot and tweeted me the Instagram link. And of course I have to regain confidence on the change. It's the pitch he's most comfortable swinging at. See what I mean about playing to lose? I'm seething at this point. I'm absolutely belligerent in my disgust with the way this game has now shaped up and all strategy goes out the window. I'm yelling at the screen, swearing up a storm, threatening to reach down Lee's colon and yank out however many lucky charms may have been stuffed up there. And looking back on this footage, 
I'm already starting to relive most of that frustration. But I'm not even angry at YK007 Lee anymore. Hell, I'm not even bothered by the lag spikes. Those are elements beyond my control. No, I'm actually more disgusted in myself because I allowed these things to dictate the remainder of this game's pace. I allowed these things to pull me out of my comfort zone and instead of beating a very easy to deflate opponent, I'm laying down on the canvas and telling Hulk Hogan over there to just pin me and get this over with. And this is the part that sickens me. Even while I was still beating myself, heh <laughs> heh, Lee was still bending over and telling me to spank his ass once more. I mash a two out Tyler Green double to center field that would have been a home run in just about any other ballpark and strand the runner on a lazy fly out to right. It's almost as if my opponent knows he shouldn't be winning this game at this point and is trying to give back the go ahead run. And yet, he was quick to pinch in Steven Drew for Siriaku in the top of the seventh when I turned the ball over to the righty Reiner Cruz. Then, like a dummy, he thought he could beat out a grounder by sliding into first. That actually slows you down! But despite his poor pitching performance that seemingly is begging for me to tie up this game, he battled hard with Poppy to crack that one out double to right. Not a face off against Mike Napoli once more with a runner on. No change ups this at bat. Not going to happen. A hard liner to center field gets caught on the track down, but I didn't immediately recognize the base running blunder on Lee's part. Otherwise, I would have had Maxwell fire to second instead of allow the play to be so close. Back on offense, I'm recognizing late that he's getting over his first pitch on the at-bats now. It's almost as if he thinks I'll just roll over the top of them for the easy out. But his location is too high. If I were to turn on those pitches, this game would already be tied right now. Instead, I'm fuming so much that all I'm doing is looking for his low pitches that I know will come. And the end result of that is another two out double, this time off the bat of Brett Wallace. Yet another opportunity to start up a rally late in this game and it comes down to an 0-2 pitch to Maxwell that he takes for strike three. After a quiet top of the ninth, Jason Castro would let rip this deep fly ball to center field that would just fall shy of the warning track for yet another double. We just can't find a way out of this ballpark to tie this game in one stroke. Matt Dominguez would put a huge charge in the very next pitch, but it's just going to fall into the glove of Shane Victorino. The fly ball was deep enough to move Castro over to third, but now we have to get a hit to drive in the tie and run. We can't look to just put the ball into play here. We have to find a gap. All that stands between me and potential victory is 90 feet of real estate. Tyler Green fights off the 0-2 pitch into the seats. We'll have to do that one again. The 0-2 pitch is a high fastball that I swing right through. And that'll be your ball game. Believe me when I tell you this. I was fuming about this loss for a good three days. I stewed in my disgust and anger over this one for so long that I really allowed it to drag me down for days. Eric Bedard would be saddled up with the loss, allowing five runs on seven hits and two walks. Your winning pitcher is Alfredo Aceves, Joel Hanrahan gets the credit for the save, and your player of the game is Mike Napoli, who just lit a charge for this Red Sox offense. Two hits and four at-bats with two RBIs and two runs. His critical game tie and two-run blast in the sixth was the deciding swing of momentum in this one. Boston would chop away for eight hits on the day, while the Astros would collect nine, five of which were extra base hits. Being so angry after the game, I immediately had to hit YK007 Lee up with a message, completely forgetting to record the box score. At this point, you know I'm being a sore loser, but I can't change what I did and I'm certainly not going to shy away from airing out what I sent him. I bitched about the lag spikes being his greatest aid in this one, titling the message, Laggy Win. It really didn't matter what the connections were because his offense suffered just as much from the lag as my pitching did. The rest of the message would read out, I can't believe you got that win when I had you off balance all game, but a few lag spikes hit to hang my changeups for you to bomb. Major luck on your side. I just couldn't believe that he quit in the middle of the game, but still found a way to win out. But whatever, can't change that now. It's not like he was a bad opponent or anything. Sure, his pitching was terrible, and had I remained calm, I likely could have extended some of those later innings by just keeping to my strategy. 
But a loss is a loss, and this is my second blown chance to win with the Astros.